Right, so the dishwasher's fixed. You don't get sprayed. Nice and steamy. And no, this isn't the end of the video. So our dishwasher failed before Christmas and it was tripping out the earth leakage circuit breaker so it was taking out all the electrics in the kitchen. And this was due to the heater element shorting to earth when it got to that phase. So what I'll do is I'll take you through getting to the heater and water pump, which is the same unit, testing that heater using a multimeter. Also I'll take apart the washer pump and heater element so you can see what actually happened to it and then putting it all back together again. So you can test the heater to make sure that is the fault before you order a new one. One thing I would say is don't work on the dishwasher live, so make sure it's fully disconnected from the mains before you do any work on this. If you've liked this video, please check out my other videos and projects that I'm doing and hit the like and the subscribe button. And please, if there's any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you. That's your motor, there's some sensors, and that's where your heater connects to. So I'll test them to see what the resistance is to earth. I should be able to tell which one's earth from this connection, because it's got an earth wire coming into there. So where that connects into so is that way round. So that end one is at earth. Nothing should be shorted out to that. I haven't actually got a mega, so I can't actually test insulation. But I should imagine that's what's causing the problem because the machine was running absolutely fine when it was on pre-rinse. So the motor was running, everything else was running in the machine, just the heater didn't come on. That's between earth and live. Earth and neutral. Earth and live the other way around. It's kind of a negative reading. Which means there's a voltage on there. So, yep, 83 millivolts on there. And 148 millivolts on there. So, 
Light some minerals. I shorten them out just in case it's capacitive. And it still goes up. So it's almost like a chemical battery in there. Right. Measure the resistance of the element. Uh, 2K, 200, 220 meg. There's a new one. There's an old one. So this one and this one is where the heater element is attached. And then this one is the earth. So there should be no connection between the heater element and the earth. So I'll test it on here and I'll test it on here. Then we'll see what the differences are. So as you can see, the old heater element has damage there to the element itself. And you can actually see metal through it. Here's a close up of what that actually looks like. If I can hold it still enough. Two hundred ohms. Across the heat element. You got twenty ohms across there. And between that and the earth, there's open circuit. That across the earth, open circuit, just test it at 20 megs, 20 mega ohms, open circuit, open circuit. As opposed to the old one, and 200 ohms, nothing there. When you make absolutely nothing, so it's completely open circuit. If I test between each one on Earth, nothing now. But that was measuring uh, a high resistance. And it was actually measuring the voltage. So what I should imagine is that was wet when I tested it last. And now it's dried out. You've got a completely open circuit there across the element. Whereas this new one, exactly 20 ohms. I'd like to point out that there's also instructions with it just to show you where to put the retaining clip and that is five millimeters above where the heating element connects to.
So I'll just put that in. Purple one on the back of the motor, like that. The two reds and the earth onto the back of the heater. Then the, the grey heater sensor cable behind the element. Click in there and click in there. Right, now to switch it on and give it a test. So I'm just going to plug this in and run it without the cover on. I wouldn't recommend running it with the cover open unless you're a qualified engineer. Right, so we'll let that run for a bit, make sure it's nice and warm in there so the heat is working. So after this one, I'll check for leaks and make sure the water's hot. Then once that's complete, I'll put the side on, put the top on, and it can go back under the worktop. I can already feel that getting really hot at the back of there, so the heat is working absolutely fine. That's that motor that's spinning up that you can hear now. That's the water drain pump. So if you ever need to replace that one. And that there is your level sensor, your water level sensor. And that's quite easy to push out. So you might want to make sure while you've got this open that that's pushed in and no water is leaking out of it. Thank you. 